That's what it was. That's what it was. That's what it was. I this knew it when I didn't see it. <laughs> you know, the camp name and all those. Look at that. Okay, cool. You could go into the icy Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it didn't matter, rain or shine, he was at my side. Uh, on or sleeping on our bed at night or in the same room. Camp David, he loved running through the woods and catching all kinds of rabbits or whatever he could get his, get his jaws on. And he was my friend and companion. Unfortunately, he died of cancer in 1993. But a wonderful dog, an English friend. This one means a lot to me because this is an exact model of a diesel submarine, uh, the USS Finback, that saved my life on September 2nd, 1944. Shot down off of the Japanese island. I was rescued a couple of hours later near that island, Shichijima, by the Finback. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, we went through 30 days on the submarine, which in many ways were more terrifying than being a pilot being shot at in the air. We were depth charged, we were bombed. Uh, our our um, skipper, uh, Commander Williams, received a very high decoration for sinking Japanese shipping while I was still on the submarine. And so this model has a very special place in my heart of a boat, we call the submarine a boat, the boat and the crew that saved my life. This flag was presented to me by uh, Admiral Larson, who was SINCPAC, Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet in 1991, uh, the 50th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. And it meant a lot to me to go there, to see down below the surface of something called the Arizona. And it was, to me, one of the most emotional days in my presidency because I could identify with those who had served and I certainly felt tremendous sympathy for the families of those who were still entrapped in the Arizona, still not still there to this day. Indeed, it was a lovely, lovely thing that the Larson did in handing me this flag that I'll always treasure. When I left government in 1976 before returning as vice president, I was director of central intelligence. President Ford awarded me this medal, the United States National Security Medal, for my service as director of central intelligence. I loved that one year of running the CIA. Men and women that, that serve in the intelligence community are the finest, most patriotic, most dedicated, most unselfish people I know. The hallmark was excellence. They never sat at the head table, they never saluted, uh, but they, they served the nation with great honor. I was privileged to be their leader for a brief period of time and honored by the President for to the tapes. I will not publish anything. I simply want, while it's fresh in your mind, to have you answer questions about what was on your mind uh, during the run-up to Desert Storm, during the war itself, during the aftermath. When he left Camp David, after a marvelously emotional day, he handed me this picture called Lying in the Sand by Ray Smith. It is one of my special Columbia landed at Denver Air Force. 
Air Force Base in California. So I had the joy of having this special personal gift from then my fiance, now my wife Barbara, uh, flown around the earth in such a historic manner. One of the things I love in life is playing golf. And uh, this picture here shows my Treasury Secretary and great friend Nick Brady. Shows Congressman Dick Schultz, Don Rostenkowski, both good friends. It shows golfing pro, famous Doug Sanders, then Barbara, then me, and then another guy that I love and respect in golf, Lee Trevino. Uh, then Mo Bandy, country music fame, also a golfer. And Bob Michael, already in Congress at the time. This was one of the fun things you got to do as president, to play golf or with friends. And this was a very, very special outing. It was $5. I think it was one by one for a bunch of families. This dog food dispenser looks like an old gumball dispenser. I was in Camp Day. We tried to get Ranger, my dog, and Millie, Barbara's dog, both dogs and both of ours, uh, to learn to put their paws on this handle shaped like a bone in order to get some chips to fall out. The dogs never learned to do that, but they knew that if I put my hand on that one and pulled it down, uh, these dog biscuits would come tearing out of the slot. <laughs> so they'd mill around, wagging their tails, making clear that they were desperately hungry and would not go away until I pulled down on the handle multi-colored dog biscuits came onto the scene. The joy I had with those dogs up in Camp David knows no bounds. This picture depicts a bluefish swimming at the bottom of the ocean, uh, hooked on my fishing line whilst I was fishing out of Fidelity, my 28-foot super racing team, uh, inboard outboard. This boat is a real fast boat with two 200 horsepower engines in it, but it can slow down so you can troll for fish or cast for fish. I had a very good year catching bluefish, and Mr. Rick Colt, of Leisure Design, sent this marvelous model along showing that I could indeed catch the bluefish. Bluefishing is a wonderful sport, tough, strong fish, and I enjoyed every, every minute trying to do in the wily blue. And this telephone reminds me at least, and I hope to remind viewers, about the communications at Camp David. I spent a lot of time there, serious business time at Camp David, as well as recreational time. And the point is the communications at Camp David were just as good as the communications in the White House itself. All I had to do was pick up this phone and I would have the White House switchboard on the line. And they are known for finding their prey in any country, at any time, day or night. I also connect with this phone to White House Signal, which was the communications board that we used to contact and talk to foreign leaders around the world. Many of my most important calls from my little office in Camp David, this phone symbolizes my ability to communicate across the United States and around the world. In addition to the marvelous recreational facilities and very comfortable cabins at Camp David, they had a little gift shop. And one of the items they sold in the gift shop uh, were these, these mugs. And this coffee mug proved to be a great item for the guests we had up there. They all wanted a little, little uh, item to show that they did at Camp David. And this, was, this was one of the best sellers there. The Camp David gift shop was not fancy. It was very small. But the joy of being at Camp David kind of spilled over so that people that were invited there I think one of their friends to know that they'd been there. And this wasn't true just for social guests, this was true for world leaders uh, and political leaders that I would invite to Camp David from time to time. I drink a lot of coffee, and both next to my bed in the White House and at Camp David. I had this coffee. 
One of the problems with drinking coffee is that you drink about a half a cup, then you get on to doing other things, and the coffee gets cold. Thus, you waste, waste coffee. Not when you use one of these marvelous devices. A, month more, a, a marvelous day, device. <laughs> Everybody who loves coffee wants to. This, of course, is the presidential flag. Flag with the presidential seal. I had one of these in my office at Camp David. This particular flag, and I had one in my office at the White House. And I tried to treat this flag with respect, with honor, of course, for a brief period in this country's history to be the president and be able to fly this flag. Flag flying in my presence. I feel emotional when I see it because the presidency itself is very, very special. I hope it's true to say that we have the integrity of the office. This flag symbolizes a lot of wonderful things about the office of the day. This is a marvelous oil right here by Ron Burkett of our place. Oh, well, shoot, where is it? It was owned it? by my grandfather, uh, Mr. G.H. Walker, built around 1902. We've expanded it in some ways, uh, improved it in others. Uh, when we bought the house in 1979, it's been through two so-called 100-year storms, both of which have clobbered it and rendered the ground floor.